26 miles across the sea from Los Angeles, Santa Catalina Island has attracted scuba divers for years with its clear waters and abundant sea life. But the beautiful undersea world can quickly become dangerous. On May 14th, Butch Hanley and his 23-year-old son, Eddie, went to Catalina on an advanced open water scuba diving class. If there's no questions, let's make sure that uh, we do proper ascents and descents. Stay with your buddy, and if there's nothing else, let's go ahead and get suited up. I've always liked water. I've, I've, I like being in water, and I've wanted to dive for years, and I've tried to talk different people into taking a class with me. And I more or less dragged my son Eddie over to it and signed us both up. And Eddie seemed to enjoy going with his father. Diving on the buddy system, they kept in close contact to make sure someone would know if either of them got into trouble. On this particular dive, it was a deep dive and a cavern dive, both. So we descended down to the mouth of the cave, which is approximately 80 feet. Instructor Rich Wallace led the small group into one of many undersea caves off Blue Cavern Point. After we played in there for a whole matter of maybe five minutes, we then met back again at the mouth of the cave to continue out to our depth that we were looking for, which is 100 feet. Once they reached 100 feet, they were supposed to begin to carefully return to the surface. You, both the basic class and advanced class person is taught to ascend normally. A normal ascent would be we don't want them to go up too fast. They shouldn't hold their breath. And this is stressed from the very, very first day in a dive class. Proper ascent is a matter of life and death to divers. Mistakes can cause lethal nitrogen to build up in the bloodstream or air bubbles to form on the brain. But this practice dive was not supposed to risk anyone's life. When it came time to ascend, Eddie seemed to have trouble getting off the bottom. The other divers got far ahead of him. During the ascent, Eddie and his father were separated, and that's not something we would ever wish to happen while we're diving. In his panic to catch up with the others, Eddie overfilled his inflatable buoyancy control vest and headed for the surface out of control. Partially 50 feet or something, he just blew past me. I knew he was going up too fast. As soon as Eddie hit the surface, he managed to signal that he was in trouble. His instructor was the first to respond. Okay. I knew there was a problem. I yelled to the boat. We got an accident. Call Baywatch. Baywatch Isthmus. Baywatch Isthmus. LA County lifeguard paramedics Steve Traeger and Richard Bates responded to the call for help. Within a few moments of, of me getting there, he was totally paralyzed from the neck down. I've seen a lot of accidents, but, but never my son that, that serious a condition. Uh, the thoughts that said he might be permanently paralyzed or die it was uh, really hard, hard to swallow. The Baywatch paramedics were on the scene within three minutes. That was a tense moment at that time, exciting for us because we knew exactly what we had. This guy's in deep coma. It was quite obvious that we were dealing probably with an air embolism. And at that time, he could have gone either way. Lethal air bubbles had formed in Eddie's brain when he held his breath while heading to the surface rapidly. Without treatment, he would die. We placed him in the Trandellenberg position. We elevated his feet about a foot and a half, thus preventing the air bubbles from lodging any deeper into the brain. I knew that we had a critical patient. I felt we had to get him to the chamber fast. There was a possibility of, of him going downhill. His uh, respiration or, and or his pulse could have uh, stopped at, at any moment. So we uh, went extra fast in getting him moved to the chamber. The hyperbaric chamber on Catalina Island is one of a very few specialized treatment centers for diving accidents, allowing total control of air pressure. We uh, transported him into the chamber uh, where we began our initial treatment of uh, getting vitals and uh, establishing an IV. A call was put into the USC Medical Center Medic Alert Team where Dr. Jeffrey Sipsey was on duty. Medical Alert Center, this is the Catalina Hyperbaric Chamber. We have a diving accident. He took charge of the patient's treatment by phone. Yeah, okay. 
Eddie needed to be taken down to a pressure level deeper than the one he was diving at, so the size of the air bubble in his brain would be reduced safely without causing paralysis or death. We have a paramedic on the outside who receives the orders from the base physician, and then in turn he can relay that to the paramedic on the inside. Ready, man? Let's go ahead and compress. Go. Although it's a slow, controlled process, the pressure in the chamber can have a dangerous narcotic effect on the rescue workers, so their condition must be watched as well. We got to about uh, 30 feet of uh, repressurizing, and the, uh, the patient started to scream. Stop the descent! I didn't know for sure if, uh, if we're blowing his ears out due to the uh, decompression. Apparently the screaming was just him starting to regain consciousness again. From outside the chamber, Butch Handley waited as they worked on his son. I could uh, watch him through a porthole in the side of the chamber. Basically, that's what I did for several hours. You know, a lot of things went through my mind, like, you know, I got him into diving. Uh, is this going to plague me the rest of my life that, you know, that basically I was the reason that he was there. Upon getting to our ultimate depth there, when we arrived at 165 feet, the patient started showing signs of recovering and coming around. That's something we see in the chamber that's it's quite dramatic. Uh, when you have a person that's completely comatose to come out within five minutes like that, it's really something. How are you feeling now? If everything is fine with the patient, in other words, his condition is improved, he's stable, we will then ascend. When we get to 30 feet in the treatment, uh, things look fine. And then suddenly, during the middle of an oxygen breathing period, that he had a seizure. Felt all right until the time that he had the seizure in the chamber, and I was just sitting there watching him through the porthole. That scared me a whole lot. And, uh, that really concerned me that there was more damage done than what the, the paramedics and doctor was was telling me. Looks like his seizure stopped. Let's roll him back on his back. We at that point in time decided that uh, this was probably due to his air embolism and the swelling on the brain and returned to the depth of 60 feet to start the treatment over again. After 13 hours of treatment in the hyperbaric chamber, Eddie was transported to the hospital. Two days later, he was released. I uh, hope this individual realizes how lucky and fortunate he is to be able to come out of this the way he did, because to me, that's, that's a medical miracle. I don't remember them ever taking me out of the water. I can remember hallucinating, and uh, what I was hallucinating was that the class had gathered around me, and the instructor was saying, well, see, this is what happens to you when, when you come up too fast. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm yelling, you know, why are you doing this to me? You know, what, what did I do? And I can remember a voice saying, you didn't do anything, just relax. And that voice was the paramedics in, in the chamber. I felt very helpless, just real helpless. I wished I could have been there with him, you know, not knowing what condition he was in. It was just, it was a very frightening experience, you know. He's my baby. <laughs> I think they did a great job. You know, so I'm very thankful for him. So, um, the quick reactions of everybody that got him in the chamber, which was basically the reason why he has no, no complications after the accident. Well, I wasn't sure if I was going to resume diving. It's a, a fear. If this happens to me again, I might not be so lucky. I might not walk away from it. I just, I love diving so much, it's in my blood, I, I had to go again. Once I did, uh, I got over the initial fear, and I've been diving ever since. And, you know, I don't, I don't even know the names of the guys that are, were in the chamber, but, you know, I'd just like to say thanks a lot, you know, you guys did a great job. <laughs>